Why do I collect action figures? It's a question I get asked all the time. And it's, for me, the answer always goes back to that, it's a hobby. Um, some people play golf. Some people go play rugby three times a week. Some people go drinking, clubbing. Some of us get up at the crack of dawn, go to car boot sales and hunt action figures. <laughs> for me, it's all about the thrill of the chase. That's why I've got so many figures around this room. It takes me back to a simpler time in my life where I could sit on the floor with a bunch of figures and make up stories and have adventures that I couldn't have in the real world. Hey guys, it's me, your host Super Sorrel. Thank you very much for tuning in. And today we're talking about why I collect action figures. Like I said at the beginning there, it's, it's all very... It's a weird topic to discuss because everyone's different. Yes, a lot of people say it's an obsession. Some people say it's a hobby. It's hoarding. It's collecting. It's a mixture of all these things. There's got to be something deep down in all of us that drives us to do these things. And whatever reason, the thing that I'm driven to do is collect action figures. I've always been into toys ever since I was a kid. I've always loved nothing more than going out, grabbing some new figures, coming home and telling stories. As you can imagine, as I've got older, that hasn't gone away. The, the idea of wanting to sit and play is still there. <laughs> because, and a lot of my friends may tell you this, the number one thing about me is I like to tell stories. I love storytelling. I like to write stories. I like to, I, if I could draw, I would be a comic book artist because I would love nothing more than to be able to create stories. That's why I do action figure photography with all my stuff, because I'm able to tell you a story through photo. And I'm able to relive the adventures from the movies that I love so much, like Star Wars, Marvel, Disney and DC, uh, from science fiction, Predator, Aliens, to horror. These are things that I love most in life and I've always loved most. But if we go back a little while, my favourite thing when I was a kid was my dad would wake me up on a Sunday morning, give me say three pounds, which was a lot of money back then in the 90s. He'd give me three pounds and he'd say, son, you can have whatever you want for that three pounds at a car boot sale. And he would take me and then I would be in charge of that three pounds and I could get as many figures as I could for that three pounds. I used to love that more than anything. And because I was a child of the 90s, that means the products that I was picking up was always turtles, it was He-Man, it was Thunderbirds, it was things that were before my time. So even though, this is why I always say, even though I'm a child of the 90s, I grew up with the toys of the 80s. I had Thundercats, I had uh, I had old Batman stuff, I I had the Ghostbusters, um, the, what do you call it, the, um, the fire station. I had that, I had the blimp from the turtles, I had the van. I had the Technodrome, which is now worth a fortune. I had the original line of Power Rangers when they first came out. My parents stood in line at midnight to get the Dragon Zord. Ah, oh, see, nostalgic memories there. It all runs out. I love it so much. And as an adult, I love the fact that companies like Hasbro have been able to reproduce these things for us. Yes, we're not collect collected the exact same toy from our childhood, so it's not the same nostalgia, but it's kind of a nostalgia because we're going back and buying those original Power Rangers, those original Marvel toys that have been reproduced on retro packaging. And it's just so awesome to be able to collect those now as an adult. Some things I couldn't afford as a kid, I've now got. Recently, you'll have seen me pick up things like the Sandcrawler. You'll have seen me pick up things like the Ewok Village. These were all things that I didn't have as a kid that I always wanted. As I've said before, Star Wars wasn't a big thing in my childhood. I grew up watching the films and I loved the movies, but because I was in that late 90s, early 2000s at that point, Lego Star Wars was the latest and greatest toy. So I didn't collect action figures of Star Wars. I had the Star Wars Legos. So I never had the Ewok Village. I never had the vintage toys. I grew up uh, with the Legos. 
that's why now it's so cool to go back and pick up these things because they're new to me even though i'm aware of them they're new to me to play with and have fun with So I just wanted this video to address a few things. Some people message me on a regular basis saying, aren't you too old to collect toys? No, not at all. Are you too old to be going out drinking? Of course not. Are you too old to be going out playing golf? It's the same thing. It's a hobby, it's a passion. Some people collect beer mats. Some people collect bottle caps. Some people collect stamps and train numbers. I collect action figures and pieces of plastic. That's the only difference. As a kid, I, and I'm guessing a lot of collect, collectors feel this way, there's something that resonates from these movies with us. A lot of us were probably the kid that got bullied. I think a lot of us were the kids that were maybe felt forgotten. I don't know, that's how I always felt. I've explained before, my disabilities, I grew up in a in a community where I was pretty much the only disabled kid. It wasn't until I was about 12 years old that I, that, no, about 13 years old even, that I even met another disabled kid that was in my school. And he didn't join us till a lot later on. So I mean, I was, I was never around other disabled kids. I felt like the odd one out. And I had my false leg, I had my colostomy bag, and I felt different. And then one day I picked up a copy of the, of the X-Men. My dad bought me one of those big bumper things that were in black and white paper. So it was like a comic book slash coloring book almost. It probably wasn't a coloring book, but I tried it like one. <laughs> but it had all those classic giant X-Men stories. And suddenly I was introduced to a world where they were telling me it was okay to be different. And that's where I got into X-Men and Marvel and Spider-Man. I started reading those books and I really got into comic books as a kid. So basically what I'm trying to say is I think each of us in this world are different and we all collect for very different reasons. Not all of us have the same type of collecting. Some of us are more completionist, 
Some of us are just base collectors. Some people just grab the occasional figure. Uh, some people are like me and just spend most of their lives buying figures and, you know, displaying them, having fun with them. And I don't think there's anything wrong in that. And I just wanted to make this little video just to address that. Because I do get a lot of um, messages, comments, emails on a regular basis telling me to grow up telling me to stop doing what I'm doing on YouTube because I'm pathetic and then I'm a giant man-child which the last one I will admit I am a giant man-child I don't think there's anything wrong with being in touch with your inner kid I don't think there's anything wrong you guys um, obviously in, enjoy my content on a daily basis you come back every day to watch so there are like-minded people out there that are into collectibles just like me and those people that don't get it it's not for you it's clearly not your hobby but there's no reason to hate on others for it and that's kind of my moral of today's story i wanted to give you guys an insight as to what why i think i collect and what goes on in my head when i think about collecting kind of and just kind of give you guys some insight into how i got collecting where i started and so this video has kind of touched on that but i've waffled quite a lot today so i'm going to make another follow-up video in a month in a month's time or so where we will definitively look at how I started, where I started, what what was the first thing. We'll take a look at some of my older videos together as well. So stay tuned, this is kind of going to be an ongoing little series where I discuss with you guys um, my journey in collecting and where I started, things like that. So stay tuned, hope you enjoyed this little video and I want to hear your stories. Because like I say, every collector's story is different. So I'd like to know your comments down below in the comments on how you got started collecting and why you think you collect. Guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm your host, Super Sorrel, and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, may the Force be with you.